Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to round number two of the Sprint Championship in 2023 with Club 100, this time at Shennington Kart Club in Banbury. Um, we're going to get straight on with the first couple of heats because um, in my infinite wisdom, I forgot to put the GoPro on for the first heat, which went a little something like this, um, because not only was it very wet, but there were a couple of occasions where I was helped round, which isn't ideal. So you can see there, big drop in the first lap, um, having been sort of nearly sent all the way around and then on the next lap um going down towards the hairpin it got turned around and then saw all the oncoming traffic so that was very interesting and then steady sort of progression trying to make it back through the field and then ran out of talent on the penultimate lap going off at the hairpin that you can see there and once you got on the grass there it was pretty much game over so not the best first heat of the day but uh, moving on to the second heat we didn't have the camera on again because it was uh, heat six the first heat was heat four and so essentially i came out the cart and jumped straight into another cart so much better start this time uh, managed to get up into third uh, pretty much off the first lap and then chasing down chris alcock couldn't quite catch him up though but it was very very close maybe one or two more laps and we'd have been right on his bumper but that takes us to the third heat where we did have the camera on and this time we're starting alongside joe holmes on the front line front line front row and uh, we're side by side going through the first corner still very wet on the circuit there is a bit of a dry line between but we try to keep our momentum going around cafe can't quite do it the outside line was still definitely better there at this time and you can just see how the momentum there keeping the revs up in these club 100 carts so important we weren't able to do so joe was um, and he went absolutely rocketing off whilst we're there trying to pick up um, the pieces and stay ahead of p3 by the time we come out of stratford um, we've lost the toe to Joe already, um, so at this point it was just a case of, well, let's not do anything silly, we need to try and get a decent result in this heat, seeing as uh, the first heat was pretty rubbish, and uh, secure second rather than trying to hunt down one of the fastest drivers in Club 100 heavyweights um, just to gain one more position. So. Um, that was pretty much the aim for the rest of this heat was let's not do anything silly let's not go off again at uh, the Wilkins hairpin and take the best part of three business days to get out of the grass um, and keep it nice and sensible which we were pretty much able to do there was uh, one little moment halfway through um, where we got a little bit too much on the curb going through the Bruno chicane and uh, went a bit deep but apart from that um, and that sort of going a little bit wide there on the last lap but it was a pretty pretty comfortable race the gap behind was uh, was well managed joe had sort of gone off into the distance but we weren't really trying to chase him down so um not too worried about that and we would come in with two second places um, and i think i ended up having a tenth in the first heat um, after penalties were applied to some other drivers so uh, that put us in uh, in pretty much the midfield for the a final where we'd be 11th on the good side of the grid though to be fair for the first couple of months, but it had dried up a fair bit by this point. Um, as you can see there, uh, Alex Pritchard basically qualified towards the back of the C-Final and got himself up to the A. Amazing driving there for, uh, to get himself through the rough charge, but not the best start. Uh, Steve Lindley there disappearing. You've got Callum Sigurd, who's there, who's one of our C2 rivals, um, you could say at this point. So uh, we're trying to stay together with these guys, but um, with the track constantly drying and evolving, it's going to be an interesting race, this one. Uh, we did change car as well. Uh, didn't feel like the first cut we went out in uh, had the best bottom end so we came in and tried to change it four y with a bit of smoke there going into uh strafford hairpin which means we tried to get a little bit um opportunistic coming out and staying inside but because we had to stay so tight we didn't really get any drive off the corner we end up um stuck on the outside of the second part of the chicane uh, which is not where you want to be um, and then steve doesn't get the best runoff and we're kind of again sandwiched by two other drivers um, and so again this first lap hasn't been the best it was looking promising at one stage but uh, as we go through Wilkins we shoved wide uh, I think we had two carts at the inside of us the lack of grip um, and possibly desire to get forward um, got the better of some of the drivers around us and we end up falling backwards again but um, not to worry we've still got plenty of time left in this one and uh, with changing conditions, we'll surely be able to capitalise on maybe some mistakes from drivers in front. And uh, our pace have been pretty good, to be fair, when we've been driving cleanly. So um, going down in towards the heaven again, we've got Alex Pritchard trying to make a move at the inside there, getting a little bit um, side to side with the uh, driver in front. And that lets us get up the inside as we start making our way back down, starting straight towards Cafe Corner. Um, 
We're side by side with Alex at the moment, and that means that we're going to get stuck on the outside now for Cafe, which had developed a dry line. So the inside was now quicker, and as you can see here, I think that's Daryl Lowe that's just gone round uh, up the inside and now around the outside of us as we go through Grandstand Bend. Uh, but we do have a bit of a look going into um, Stratford Hairpin, two carts off towards the left there. Didn't quite see who that was, um, but there's two positions. Daryl managed to get the kick, the kick back, the switch back. Um, would be the better one for us to say there. We've got this switch back coming out of the chicane, but it gets it a bit wrong going through Bruno, and we're able to take that position back. So we've made three positions there in as many corners, which is good for us um, to see if we can start progressing our way forward as well. As you can see, the lap time starting to come down. We were in above one minute earlier in the day. We're now well into the 50s. Um, we weren't one of the quickest guys in this A final uh, by any means. The guys at the front were. Um, uh, we're a decent chunk quicker than we are at the moment, but um, the track is dry and we are progressing forwards and there is a little bit of dry line going into towards Stratford, which means we can put it up the inside. Another move there, going across into the middle of the circuit, just to try and cover it off a little bit, just to say, come on, let's be sensible, let's uh, not get into a fight and lose track of the guys in front. Um, so, as we move on to what's about to be last six, we've got Steve there, having to do some really uh, stalwart defending uh, I don't think he pulled the best cart in this uh, in this race, so he's kind of feeling like he needs to uh, put on the put on the Fernando Alonso-esque defending moves um, to keep carts behind him. Because um, it was, to be fair, this track it was all about toe, and if uh, you had someone in your toe behind you, it was very very difficult to break away from them. Uh, very powerful around Shellington. Um, as we're behind Steve here, we have a little bit of think going into the first corner, decide against it, decide to go up the inside of Cafe, but we get pinched well by Steve, which means we can't keep our momentum up as high as we'd want it to. Um, and we're sort of stuck on the outside as we go through Grandstand and run out of road um, to go at the inside. So we decide to uh, pull back in behind him rather than sending it on the uh, the dry part, sorry, rather than sending it on the wet part, we decide to stay on the dry part of the track. Um, and then it all gets a little bit clumsy, a little bit close together um, and we end up tapping so we uh, decide to fight another day and tuck him back behind. Um, have a little think about going around the outside a few times um, through Hangar Bend as we get a bit of a send up our inside, that kind of hurts our momentum. Uh, we were really trying to open up that last corner to try and get a good drive because we knew Steve wasn't able to. Um, but that time, because we had the move something inside of us, we kind of lost that momentum and weren't able to do anything. So I had to spend a lap or so catching back up. Um, but we're back on Steve's bumper. He's going to defend going to the first corner. We're forcing him to do that, um, which means that as we go into the next cafe, uh, into the cafe corner, he thinks about he has to defend again, makes a bit of a mistake, hits that kerb, um, and that completely drops the revs of the engine. It means that we can keep our momentum up, go around the inside, it comes the outside of grandstand, and that is the move. Uh, that we were trying to make, see if we could force Steve into a bit of a mistake um, and then capitalise on that. And then from this point onwards, um, it was a pretty lonely race. The groups in front had, uh, had buggered off into the distance and um, we were pretty much on our own. We were able to pull a gap to the carts behind. Um, I'm not sure how many people got through on Steve in the end. Um, I think he carried on doing some pretty stellar defending but eventually got overwhelmed at some point. And, uh, it was a very lonely last four laps or so as we come across the line. We set our fastest lap of the race um, at the end, but again, with no one to kind of base it off in front of us, I think we had some time left to gain. If we, uh, if we had someone to chase, we might have gone a bit quicker. But um, we end up fourth overall in C2. That's two fourths in a row now in C2. But hopefully next time out at Wilton Mill, we can get that podium uh, that we've been fighting for so far. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. And as always, have a good one.